Cut that off. Yes, sir. Minutes before she takes it, uh huh. So All I right. set the timer on my phone. Okay, when uh, when when it's ready to take it, you give her a call, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you for backing it up on that. Oh, no problem. And if necessary, I'll take a little break while you yes, do that. The most effective and least expensive mouthwash. This is sodium hypochlorite, which is found in household bleach. From an efficacy and, and safe stop. From an efficacy and from an efficacy. Stop. From an efficacy and safety. From an efficacy and safe, why can't I say that? From an efficacy and safety standpoint, we need to be aware that this is used to render contaminated. Stop. From an efficacy and safe, why can't I say that, Jonathan? Is that a From an efficacy and safety standpoint. We need to realize that sodium hypochlorite is used to render contaminated water palatable. In a post by the Center for Disease Control in 2009, they stated that one fourth teaspoon to a gallon of water makes contaminated water drinkable. So let's see how that applies and how we use that in periodontal therapy. I was a stop. I was introduced to sodium hypochlorite as an oral rinse by Dr. Gordon. Jordan. I don't know whether I want to dictate this or not. Starting from the beginning, the most effective and least expensive mouthwash is a very weak solution of sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in household bleach. Sodium hypochlorite has been used to render contaminated water poly sodium hypochlorite has been used to render contaminated water pot potable stop sodium hypochlorite has been used to render contaminated water potable or drinkable in a post by the center for disease control in 2009 they recommended that one fourth teaspoon to a gallon of water would make the water drinkable but we need to talk about this not only from a safety standpoint, but an efficacy standpoint. I was introduced to this concept by Dr. Jorgen Slots at a meeting in Mexico City in the early 1990s where both of us were speaking. He, he indicated that a 0.05 solution of sodium hypochlorite should be used, could be used as an oral rinse. He recommended one teaspoon to 16 ounces of water 
and you want to use plain and unscented sodium hypochlorite. It can be used for treating disease or used for treating halitosis, bad breath, or malodor. In periodontal disease, I think the solution that Dr. Slots recommended, one teaspoon to 16 ounces of water, is quite appropriate. However, I think we can make this weaker if we're going to just treat halitosis and one teaspoon to a quart of water works very well in that situation. And this is personally what I use in my own mouth. Let's talk about some practical considerations. It can be used in a water jet to treat pockets or residual periodontal defects. What you need to do is to place one ounce of water in the reservoir of the water jet and care should be taken when using the water jet to uh, stop practical considerations can be used in a water jet to treat pockets or residual periodontal defects place one ounce in the reservoir of the water jet be careful in using this because there's a possibility that the splatter may bleach clothes whether you use it in the water jet or whether you use it just as a rinse, always use a measuring spoon and we want to use one teaspoon. We do not want to use a tablespoon because more is not better. Basically the only two things that you use is a teaspoon uh, of plain unscented sodium hypochlorite to a quart of water. But before using this solution, please look at the importance of cleaning your tongue by, before using this solution, please watch the video on the importance of cleaning your tongue and the tongue scraper recommended by Dr. Robert Rippich. How do you use this solution? Do you use it as a rinse or do you use it in the water pick? Either way is fine depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I think one ounce works quite well and one ounce can be placed in the mouth, rinsed, sucked between the teeth after brushing and interdental cleaning. You can also put one to two ounces of water in the water pick. Stop, stop, stop. How do you use a solution? I think one ounce works quite well. If you're using it in a water irrigator, maybe one to two ounces may be necessary. However, if you're using it just as an oral rinse, one ounce works quite well. And you want to swish this between your teeth after brushing and interdental cleaning. Gargle to kill the bacteria and uh, viral pathogens on the posterior third of the tongue. Use a tongue sweep stop. Use a tongue sweeper to scrape the posterior third of the tongue where the sulfur forming bacteria that are associated with malodor are found. Rinse vigorously and with plain water, spit out. And if you're concerned about swallowing some of this solution, drink an eight ounce glass of water to dilute it markedly if you have swallowed any far below the concentration used for creating potable water. How effective is the water jet in removing uh, plaque? Let's talk a little bit about some background on that. The acquired pellicle is a thin protein containing film derived from salivary glycoprotein. It begins to reform after, after brushing within 30 seconds. Bacterial plaque. When the bacteria, when the bacteria stop, bacterial plaque, when the bacteria stop. Bacterial plaque. When the bacteria attach to this pellicle, this becomes bacterial plaque. And I think we need to revisit the water jet on this. And here's an article from the late 80s, which says moderate hydraulic forces produced by a dental water jet can significantly remove the biofilm. By using the water irrigator, we can treat residual periodontal defects. The solution is forced deeper subgingivally to disinfect. And the difference between a periodontal pocket and a periodontal defect is on a video also on my web textbook. Does the solution 
degrade and lose potency over time? Quite frankly, I really don't know. But I suggest that you discard and make a new solution approximately every two to three weeks. The disclaimer, and this is important, the information is being provided for the educational purposes only and the solution should not be used at stop. The disclaimer. The information is being provided for educational purposes only and the solution should only be used at your own risk. More importantly, this is not a prescription. The solution should only be used at your own risk. Under no circumstances should it be swallowed. Children should not use the solution because they may inadvertently swallow some of the solution. Expectant mothers or women considering uh, becoming pregnant should not use this solution as its impact on the development and the uh, fetus is not known. What are the side effects of ingesting sodium hypochlorite? Drinking bleach can cause effects that range from mild to severe, depending on the amount ingested. Med Medline Plus states that this is stop. The side effects of ingesting sodium hypochlorite Drinking bleach can cause effects that range from mild to serious depending on the amount ingested. Medline Plus states that consuming bleach or sodium hypochlorite may lead to mild stomach irritation. Ingesting larger amounts can lead to uh, gagging a sensation, uh, pain in the mouth or in the throat, burns in the esophagus, chest pains, low blood pressure, slow heart rate, delirium, coma, shock, vomiting, and stomach and abdominal pain, and perhaps even death. So I would like to offer you the challenge, the Miller Challenge, to try cleaning your tongue and scrubbing sodium hypochlorite into the posterior third of the tongue after brushing and interdental cleaning for 30 days. Then ask your spouse or your significant other if you should continue with this program or go back to your old oral hygiene program. We have 10 minutes before we call Ms. Miller. Okay, how long? Oh, okay, very good. We'll stop at any time. Yes, sir. <laughs> 